teams, the same old faces, the same old culprits that are coming up amongst the Manchester United fan base that had a major problem at this football club. I'm going to go through it all. It's not just me saying it. I've got proof that you guys are in on it as well. Stay tuned for that one. I'm going to bring in your comments from earlier today's video where we're talking about Ten Hag, his ill health and how bad he's looking and why that is. According to you lot, that is because of three certain players in particular. Man, you would not believe the amount that came in for the same three. It is like everyone is on the same page, weirdly. Also, updates regarding Manchester United's directors, directors of football, recruitment, whatever you want to call it. There are updates there. I'll get into that as well. But first of all, let's get into what you guys were saying earlier on today and what you thought are the main problems going on with Manchester United right now. Why are these particular players... The ones that are causing the big, big issues at Manchester United right now. I want to get that conversation going off what your comments were earlier on today. I'm Adam. This is Forever United TV. Welcome along to the show, everybody. Hope you're doing well. End of the weekend. Easter weekend is done and dusted, guys. It has lashed it down today. Welcome to the Easter holidays. First uh, bank holiday. And it's lashed it down. Welcome to England, you could say. April Fool's Day and all of that jazz. I don't fall for that crap or anything like that. But yeah, United, uh, well and truly, <clears throat> well, in the mud. Let's just say that. We covered all of what happened at Brentford. There's more that has been said on that uh, over the last uh, few hours, but no need to go over all of that again. We already know where we stand with everything. Uh, make sure you guys please give the video a like and are hitting that subscribe button as well as we go through all of your likes. I'm much appreciated as always, everyone. I hope you had a great day. I can see all of the members, the mods and everyone in the chat and all the newcomers. If you are new, make sure you do hit that subscribe button, guys. Let's get into what you guys were saying earlier on. So earlier on, uh, just to tell you all what was going on, we was out. There wasn't much news, but I uh, I'd been looking at a few stories, a few pictures about Ten Hag is what looks like a deterioration of his health, to be honest. Like we talked about this like with Jose, with Ole. It's the same with Ralph a little bit, but luckily for him, he wasn't there long enough for this football club to actually start to physically show the strain that is put upon managers when trying to get something out of this team. Like it continues all the time. And the reason for it continuing and all these managers still struggling no matter who it was, no matter what the reputation, no matter how well they've done before, the same players keep on coming up constantly all the time. I didn't mention any player in particular. This video is made from your reaction to my earlier video, guys, and what you guys were all saying in the comments section. So I'm going to bring them up now uh, and let you guys see what was said. So the general uh, sort of script of the video earlier on was Ten Hag, how he's struggling, how the strain, how the media are building up negatives constantly, constantly. There were some great comments on the video earlier on today, guys. Thank you so much for getting involved in that. But here's pretty much what was said. So I'm going to lean back. I'm going to look in. I don't know why I'm looking so red today. It's kind of weird. It really is. But yeah, right. Okay. So comments from earlier on today's video, like you can see now. So this isn't me saying this is what you guys are going in on. I truly think that Rashford in particular, Bruno and McTominay, should be ashamed of the stresses uh, he is causing Eric Ten Hag. You love Man United, then leave and don't be a parasite, as in get away from the football club and just let someone else come in who is better and more willing to put effort in. I'm guessing from that anyway. Another one here says, if he continues to pick McTominay and not bench Bruno and Rashford, then he's out in the summer. And if they bring Southgate in, I'm out. <laughs> uh, Ineos to Jim Radcliffe uh, can F off. Not happy United fans, it would seem. Another one goes in. Ten Hag has brought this on himself. Playing underperforming players like Rashford, Bruno, McTominay, 90 minutes every game to scare, uh, too scared to drop them all down to poor management. This is what everyone is saying about Eric Ten Hag and why he is deteriorating. Uh, it should be Rashford and a few others who are feeling and showing signs of stress. The fact they are in the verge of destroying yet an, on the verge of destroying yet another manager should not go unnoticed, nor should it pass unchallenged. It appears to be getting to the manager and the fans more than if uh, it is those wearing the famous red shirt. Uh, and another one is what I bring up here as well from our Babs. I thought the same. A very wrinkled forehead on Eric Ten Hag and looking very old and worn down. 
What a shame. The players and the media are all to blame. I want to keep him regardless and let him finish the job and get rid of all the Deadwood and bad influences like Rashford. Uh, see you at the Sheffield game. See you there, Babs. Uh, but yeah, that pretty much uh, from this morning, that was a snippet. And it's like nearly 100 comments on that video from this morning and still growing right now. And they're all pretty much of the same sort of angle, like going in on particular players. Why is it Scott McTominay? Why is it Marcus Rashford? I'm not big enough what I was saying a while ago, but a few months ago, I made a list of players that had been through all of the managers. I made a list of snippets of newspaper articles over the years of player power, player struggles, leaks from the dressing room, problems going on behind the manager's backs. It was Luke Shaw, Marcus Rashford, Anthony Martial and Scott McTominay. Those were, the, those were the players that have seen through all of the last five managers at this football club. Common denominators, you would say, in all of this. But what, is, what isn't going unnoticed now is the players. Like There is a massive backlash for Ten Hag right now. Uh, I understand it. I know that everyone is sort of... We're regimented into thinking that the manager is going to be the problem and is the problem in any sort of issue you've got at the football club. We're all sort of programmed in to think that the manager's the one who's going to get the blame. But what isn't going unnoticed now is the players and the names of the players that keep on prop cropping up in not only my live streams, and I wanted to give a chance to some of the comments from the videos as well, because we try and talk through as many of the live comments uh, as as many of the comments as uh, we can in the live shows, but also comments in terms of what people are saying, I think, in more confidence after the lives are finished and when the videos are going up. Someone likes to leave a comment, usually where you would get like the people slagging me off, like the bullish ones, I, I, I always say. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, there is uh, other news going on as well, guys. Honestly, I... And their cheers for the super chats. One football saying Wilcox resigned to Southampton. I know this has all been going on and it is a sort of side story to what was getting on. It's kind of ruined my video a little bit because everyone's talking about the main news going on. We'll possibly get back to it, but uh, just to update you guys on what is actually happening with... Uh, Manchester United situation, directors of football and things like that. Jason Wilcox has resigned from Southampton. He will now join Manchester United as new technical director. Southampton refused to accept a fee, so he has resigned. That's come from Fabrizio Romano and quite a few other sources now. Uh, so Wilcox is on his way. It has been broken by Fabrizio Romano. Uh, it's not major breaking news. It's nothing substantial. It's just what we knew was going to happen. The only reason that Wilcox has been announced now is simply because Dan Ashworth is not going to be announced. It is still at loggerheads and no agreement between United and Newcastle has been reached. And United are now resigned to the fact that they will not have Dan Ashworth in situ come the summer. So they are doing all the work that they can around that and getting other things done and put in place that is what is coming out now so yes just to confirm everybody uh Fabrizio Romano has just tweeted out that Jason Wilcox has resigned from Southampton he is set to join Manchester United as new technical director Southampton refused to accept a fee so Wilcox will resign as he wants to join Manchester United's projects former Manchester City head of academy will be a key part of Manchester United's new era under Ineos. That's from Fabrizio Romano and a few other sources. Uh, the Mail also reporting on the Dan Ashworth side of things. Uh, Manchester United have given up on hope of securing Dan Ashworth before the summer. So that is your updates on Manchester United's technical director slash well, whatever you want to call him in Jason Wilcox. Uh, if you're wondering... Who he is, we have talked about it before. No one has really talked in detail about Wilcox because we're all waiting for the Dan Ashworth story to sort of evolve and well get finalised and see him sign. I think Ineos wanted, and it was made clear that Ineos wanted Dan Ashworth in first and sign seal delivered, but quite clear that they have now, like the Mail have said, this sort of coincides with that story that they've given up on Dan Ashworth coming into Manchester United before the summer. They're just going to wait it out. They'll wait it out if they have to and not got a problem with that. So, yeah, 
We talked about that the other day, actually, in terms of at least having Omar Barada in situ. It now looks like Wilcox is also going to be uh, in place for the summer as well. So two pieces of the jigsaw puzzle in. Liverpool, uh, sorry, Newcastle holding firm on Dan Ashworth and the negotiations there at the moment. So that, for me, is exactly what I expected to happen. I think everyone else would say the same. Like, no Dan Ashworth this summer. We're talking about Myrto. Myrto has been doing works behind the scenes with Omar Barada ahead of him, who is going to be available to work officially for Manchester United in June, just before the Orioles get started and the transfer window opens. So that's good news as well. Wilcox can, by the sounds of it, and I don't know why this is different. Obviously, uh, Ashworth is now on leave. Uh, Sorry, Ashworth is now on gardening leave. Uh, So we don't know what the difference is in terms of why... I think it's because Wilcox has just retired. I don't know why it's different with uh, Dan Ashworth and why we can't get that deal done. But obviously, I don't know if Ashworth is... It, well, Ashworth is still being paid. So that's probably why he's on gardening leave. Uh, Wilcox has resigned and just completely tore up his contract with Southampton. By all accounts, Southampton are fuming with this situation. They are livid. So, yeah, it isn't, it isn't ideal for them but Manchester United really don't care right now they have seen what's needed they know the plan they want going forward and they are making moves and not really caring who they upset in the process to get their pieces in place all of this then looks like unfortunately for Eric another manager possibly coming in in the summer it's like everyone else has changed everyone's been moved on Ten Hag, I just feel like he right now he is like we said earlier on in the video, dead man walking into. He really is, and you you can't see any way out of it for him. It's like everything is being moved around him, and everything has been put in place. Uh, the only thing that matters at this football club, and the only thing that really makes uh, any significance of these signings going on with like Wilcox, Ashworth, Barada, and things like that, is results on the pitch. They cannot run the football team. They can run the football club, but they cannot run the football team. Again, it goes down to what we said at the start of the video, though. It's like, yeah, bring Wilcox in. Fantastic news. Good. Done very well. He's well thought of in football circles, and what he does, he's well respected as well. So that's a good move. Smart for Manchester United. Ashworth, the same. Barada, the same. But it goes down to what we said at the start. Again, it counts for nothing if the same players are still going to be at the football club because Omar Barada isn't in the changing room, neither is Ashworth or Wilcox, it's the manager. And if the manager can't handle these prima donnas and these issues that we're talking about at the start of this show, then there is no hope for Manchester United still. And it's going to carry on. It's just going to be the cycle again. Significant moves behind the scenes need to move forward into the front of house, i.e., Start making big moves with players. Otherwise, the ones that you're making now behind the scenes with the staff in are going to look stupid because they cannot change the way that Marcus Rashford plays. They can't. They cannot change the attitude of Marcus Rashford. They can't make Scott McTominay a better midfielder or Bruno Fernandes stop hitting Hail Mary balls or just running around the pitch like an headless chicken. For some reason... This, uh, the Bruno situation is probably more concerning than the Rashford and the Scott McTominay one for me. How everyone has just completely given up on Bruno Fernandes. There's some that are not. Uh, like myself, I still think there's hope for Bruno Fernandes. I'll stick to that. I, uh, everything that he is, his work rate is everything that Scott and Marcus Rashford are not for me. And I still think there's hope there for him. There's a manager that will get the best out of Bruno Fernandes in this team. But it will be a very, very strict manager who restricts Bruno and stops giving him the freedom of the pitch, I feel, that Tenag is giving him, which is making it worse. (sighs) Looking at the situation as a whole, I feel half confident that all of this news and moves are going on behind the scene. Uh, Like we said, now we'll have all of the new board in place, confirmation of Ineos in. Wilcox is going to be confirmed, or my Barada's con- uh, confirmed. I think there's going to be one more, which is obviously uh, Mr. Dan Ashworth himself, which we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for. Nearly everything is in place now, and it's all looking very good. But still, you've got to look at 
what it all comes down to. And the only thing that matters at Manchester United, and the only thing that matters even more now after what Sir Jim Radcliffe has said when he's come in, is results on the pitch. And it doesn't matter who is a new director of recruitment, who is uh, a new... uh, that's the word, technical director, whatever you want to say, CEOs, board members, it doesn't matter who is in place. It's not going to change if you keep the same core of players in this first team. There is, I would say, what? There was half, half of that team, more than half of that team, I feel, that started against Brentford. The fans have called out and need, at different times, have called out and said that them players need to be moved on. They need to be moved on. A super chat in from MDR. I'm coming to the rest of the comment section now, guys, as well. So get your comments in. Uh, Adam, if we get rid of Rashford, Bruno, McTominay, uh, who are good candidates that could, who are good candidates that could replace them, or would we have to wait a couple of windows? Uh, Marcus Rashford, you would say, Alise is a style of replacement for him. Uh, I don't have it. To be honest, Alise. I understand his qualities and I do like the player, I do. Uh, the injury concerns worry me more than anything. Uh, in terms of McTominay, there are better players out there. Uh, the big issue with McTominay, and we discussed this before, is like he's happy to sit on the bench. So I don't think it, I don't think the issue with T- McTominay is getting rid of him. I think the issue is starting him. Like He can sit on the bench for me. I like McTominay off the bench. I think he is impactful. And he is, he's lethal. He really is, he causes havoc every time he comes on the pitch. So McTominay's not so much an issue for selling, I don't think. Unless you know you're going to get a decent amount for him and that can go towards an outstanding player or potentially great player. Like I've always said, Jao Neves is the next up-and-coming player coming out of Benfica that someone, another big club, will buy. And at the age he is and what he's doing now and hitting the international, that would be a player I would bring in as well. There are other midfielders that you could also bring in for for Bruno Fernandes. Some will say, unlike in previous videos over the last couple of nights, people have said Mason Mount is better than Bruno to me. Have we not already got a replacement for Bruno? Is Bruno the same as McTominay? Does Bruno just need time out on the bench? And then come on. And Mason Mount get a chance. Do we have to sell Bruno? Do we have to sell McTominay? Marcus Rashford, I think, needs to be out of the football club. Because I don't think Bruno Fernandes is an issue off the pitch. I don't think Scott McTominay is an issue off the pitch. I don't think they're disliked in the changing room. I think they're both loved in the changing rooms. I think you've got to have the right manager in place who's got the balls to drop both of these players, especially Bruno Fernandes. And like I said, I will go back to it again. I love him. But I am not the type of fan that's just going to make an excuse for a player that I like or have said I've liked before just to drive my agenda off. I, there's plenty of fans that do that. I have not got a problem with Bruno Fernandes being dropped from this team and Mason Mount being given a run and see if he can do it or bring something different. Or it doesn't necessarily need to be Mason Mount. Could you not play someone else there? Do you know what I mean? Change it. He's the one that's continuously playing. Like Because he's the captain, he plays in the team. It's like when Harry Maguire was captain. We didn't have to play him every time. So what's the issue if we have to drop Bruno? I love him. I think he's overworked. I think he isn't disciplined enough in position. And I think he does cause a problem, not all the time, a percentage of the time. I think Man United fans would realise what they were what they were missing when Bruno was out the side. That's just my opinion. It's not the be-all and end-all, a definite gospel. It's just my opinion on that and... Everyone's welcome to theirs. I understand the people that want him gone. I understand the frustrations. The big issue is always going to be, and and you know it, I don't want to mention his name too much, but you already know who I'm going to say. I think that's the one. I think that's the head. Once that goes, I think things start to calm down everywhere else. I do. I think the club are stuck and I've been, I think, suckered into keeping Marcus because of how he's come through and what he's done. It's like you said, in in business or in any walk of life, you don't get through and you don't get to the top especially without having to make some really hard calls. This is a hard call. I understand the repercussions of it, but I do understand that it will be the long-term game 
long-term gain for Manchester United. I'm convinced of it now, and no one will convince me otherwise. Just because another manager comes in, and do you know what? Half the time makes me uh, it worries me, and this is just my football head going over time here again. And that is that Marcus Rashford actually thinks that Southgate is going to be coming in, and it really doesn't matter what he does right now because you know if Southgate comes in, we are stuck with Rashford until he bleeding retires. And that is the massive worrying part for me. It's like Rashford's thinking like it doesn't matter what happens and how he falls out with Ten Hag. He he literally will just hang on to the club until the new manager comes in. Even when he did that interview, Marcus, he didn't mention Ten Hag. He just mentioned the club. No one picked up on that. He doesn't give a toss about Ten Hag. He really doesn't. And he showed that. In his attitude, he showed that in his performances and what he does off the pitch. So, I think he, uh, this is like the big worry. Like it's the overthinking fan inside me that says this. That Marcus Rashford isn't really bothered what he does right now. He does not concern the toll of his form, the effort, or anything. The criticism, he doesn't give a toss because he knows his place is safe in Manchester United side. Because come the summer, Ten Hag will be gone, and we probably end up with waistcoat man Gareth Southgate himself, who loves Marcus. And we'll play him definitely. And I think Marcus will know that he could probably wrap Southgate around his finger. So that's my biggest concern. And that's my horrible feeling inside my United head about Marcus Rashford right now and where his head is at. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we do have a new member in the house. Man, your comments are flying in. I'm going to the comments section next. Uh, <clears throat> what's that? Uh, Dukio, uh, <laughs> Dukio. Oh God, Adam. Duke of Hazard. Because it's all one word. I said that. Dukio. That's a new one for me. I'm sorry. Hold my hands up. Both of them. <laughs> I like the name though. It sounds good. Duke of Hazard. <laughs> it's when you don't have a space in between. It just plays with my ah, dyslexia and it just kills me every time. But yeah, welcome to the members club. Honest Tiger, thank you so much. Uh, Honest Tiger, that just reminds me. Sadly, no Manchester United fan guessed the first goal scorer in our competition for the Brentford game. So Honest Tiger's donation, uh, which is uh, going to be passed over now to the Chelsea game, guys. So members, be ready for the Chelsea game. The competition rolls over and we have to name the first goal scorer again. Uh, in that one, because no one guessed it right on the Brentford game. Crazily, and funnily enough, Manchester United's lack of goals have actually cost us giving someone a prize away. Ah, God, yeah, typical United, eh? Madness. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Miracle, with the Elise thing, I am praying they are bringing him in because they are planning on selling Rashford. Unfortunately, it is more likely that he is coming because uh, they are getting rid of Sancho. Agreed, Mr. Miracle. Totally agree. Uh, Mahinda says uh, we should have got uh, Ward Prowse on Madison. They have transformed their perspective teams. Yes. Uh, also, bit of an update, guys. Uh, totally off topic, but uh, the members... Uh, that have been doing the watch-alongs with me on TIFO and was building that platform. I mentioned the competition uh, with other influencers that were bigger and have bigger followings than us. But because our community is so solid and the best, and I keep saying it's the best, TIFO runs off the community and the numbers on that channel and on that platform are based off the strength of people staying in and the community staying and chatting and retention side of things. And we have won it. We have won the competition for March. So I do get a prize on FUTV. That is being invested straight back in to the channel, guys. And something new, which is already being worked on in the wings. The investment is going straight into that. And I will let you know in due course what that is. But guys, you absolutely smashed it. Members, I love you all. You are the best community out there. Fantastic job. And when I say we kicked ass... We absolutely smashed it out of the park, guys. So thank you once again, all the members who have been helping me with that uh, and your interactions and contributions to the shows have won the day for us. It feels amazing to say that. It really does. Uh, sorry I've not been able to get to all your comments there, guys. There's been so many coming in. Uh, I'm going to try and get through as many as I can now to give you your chance. Uh, Adam Rashford is an issue on and off the pitch. He has to go. Uh, he is a bad influence on the young players. 
Uh, Rashford doesn't play for England as a starter anyway, so I can't see that, says United Spotlight on my comment about Southgate. When there isn't any op any opposition, then I think you'll feel more comfortable. That's my worry. <clears throat> and you're hoping that United do bring players in to make competition for Marcus Rashford. But I'm telling you now, right, in his head, he's thinking he doesn't have to wait much longer. It doesn't matter for him. He just looks that way on the pitch. Like, oh, it doesn't matter. I've lost the ball. Oh, nah, never mind. Never mind. It's not going to be a problem for me. Uh, Defence is going to get all the criticism when they can see the late goal again. Lee Dixon says, if Ineos are doing deals for Wilcox and Co., uh, then they should be active in players like Barella, Paqueta. Now, we're never going to know if they are or not in that department. Hopefully, it is all in stealth mode and everything is being done behind the scenes already, Lee. Uh, so I do agree with you. I hope they are doing it. I just, I'm happy with not knowing about it because that way nothing gets built up into something it's not and we can just get the player in if we've definitely got that signed, sealed and delivered. P please, please give the video a like, guys. We've gone over 150 now, already killing it. Download our Sofa Score app. The QR code is in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen there, guys. Scan that code. Download the app. It is completely free. The best football app that there is. Fastest stats out there on the market, guys. Absolutely brilliant and up-to-date. Uh, I mean, the fastest that you will get. And it gives you all other news regarding the club, from transfer deals, injury updates, and everything going on in international football as well. There is a link in the description as well, guys, below. So drop down in that if you can't scan the QR code and click on that link. Again, all three helps the channel, helps us grow and helps us become the best, which I think we already are. And proof is in the pudding. He's in the eating. We're in the eating. Yes, it is. And that is that us here on FUTV. I've also won a competition on another platform as well because we have the best members section and community there is out there. Love you all. Thank you. Andy Oates says, Southgate is not a Man United manager. He's a Crystal Palace level at best. Championship. I'll top that, mate. Christopher Green, Southgate doesn't even start the man Rashford. He doesn't rate Rashford. Uh, I think when, like I said, I understand that and I've been big on that myself about Rashford learning from being dropped out of the England squad now. Not out of the squad, but uh, not in the starting lineup. Like Gordon's ahead of him, other players are ahead of him, Miles ahead of him, in fact. But I also understand that at Manchester United, there isn't many offers, uh, sorry, there isn't many other options than Marcus Rashford right now. And if we don't get our targets in the summer, he's laughing all the way back into that first 11 again, isn't he? Week in, week out. TFO Time members says, Kaz, sell Rashford to PSG. Uh, it says, Amy, no one had Mount 90 plus on the bingo card. No one had that MDR, no. That was a that was a that would have been amazing odds, wouldn't it? That one, it really would. We will always get ripped uh, when we play Maguire or Lindelof because they're always carrying behind Anana. Says Andy W is Malasia return an April Fool's Day prank? I don't know on that one. I seen that pop up pop up on social media earlier on as well, but I didn't even click on that. It was April Fool's Day. I've not even looked into that. I seen the notification just pop up and I thought, oh, hello. And then, no, I didn't even think. So that might be a good point. Uh, I might be wrong on that one. I'm glad I didn't bring that up at the start of the show because I've not done enough research into that. Uh, I'm not really bothered about Malassia right now uh, in terms of what's happening because I know he's not fit. I'm not saying that because I'm not, I don't care about him. I want him to be back on that pitch. I really do. He gives us another option. And he's really important to Manchester United right now. And I hope his mental health is on point as well when he does come back, which is more important than anything. <clears throat> uh, I just read Zidane is our new manager of five years, says Alex. Oh, God. And then I woke up with my head in a bowl of cornflakes. That was a great dream, wasn't it? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, Stephen Harper has just dropped a membership taken by Mark Glover. Mark, welcome to the Members Club, my man. And thank you, Stephen Harper. Mark, make sure you give Stephen a thank you in the live comments. Adam, if Eric Tanagi sacked, I would appoint Ancelotti as manager. Do you agree? I would take Ancelotti in a heartbeat, Henry, but I don't think it will happen. Uh, Emmanuel says, as an Everton fan, I can't wait uh, what Ineos is going to do in the summer. And I hope it is good one. 
uh, so that Manchester United won't be in the state again or else I will be fuming until I explode. As an Everton fan, that is a strange one. But yeah, I'm happy that other fans are looking at that in that way. Maybe an Everton fan looking at it because they want us to topple Liverpool again. <clears throat> it was easy for Everton fans when United were great. Or easier, I would say. God help Rashford if De Zerbi takes over, Adam. <laughs> yeah, that is a point. Uh, MGA, uh, definitely, because he will demand an awful lot. I don't think Rashford has got to give. Like, Rashford only works in a team that is already working perfectly and is just an option like a, a bit of flair on top, a bit of icing, a cherry on top of a cake. That's the type of player Rashford is. He's a luxury player. He isn't a worker. I don't think he is a player that can work in a particular system apart from counter-attack. He doesn't work any other way because he hasn't got the work ethic. Uh, Wilcox will be head of academy, uh, not director of football. No, we know that, Lee. Uh, no one said uh, he wasn't going to be. He's going to be a technical director. Uh, he will be probably involved in the academy, the academy which is already doing fantastic. So we're enhancing the level of our academy now as well in bringing Wilcox in. But he will be a player uh, that is involved. He will be a part of what's involved above the manager uh, and the recruitment side of things. So recruitment doesn't always mean bringing players in. It doesn't mean he's a director of football. It means that he is finding younger talent as well and nurturing the younger players coming through from our own academy as well. So there's a lot more to the role than what it sort of says on the tin. So, yeah, I think he's important and he is grown in influence. He left Manchester City because he didn't get the role he wanted there. He'd worked in the academy side. He wanted a bigger role. He's gone and moved to Southampton to get the director of football role. So I don't think he would have moved away from Southampton and the director's role there if he wasn't offered a little bit more incentive-wise, i.e. job title-wise at Manchester United, if you get what I mean. I think he would have been sweetened up a little bit so I think his role will I think his role will change as it goes along I think there will be uh, an awful lot of uh, attention to it and I think there will be uh, a lot of I think there'll be seniority and responsibility to it as well it will be covering a lot uh, Peter says Adam do you think Glazers still have an influence about Rashford due to his commercial value honestly I don't think Marcus Rashford's commercial value is helping the club right now. I don't. Like, I feel like once Ineos come in, they're not going to listen to anything the Glazers say regarding football matters. The Glazers have killed the football club. So Jim Radcliffe just handed over a fortune to take control of football matters. I can't see Ineos relinquishing any power to the Glazers when it comes to decisions on the football. They may say something to him and say we would like this, but I would fully expect Ineos to go, get back in your lane. This is why we're here at Manchester United, to make things work on the pitch. So if commercial revenues go down because we want the f footballing revenues to go up, then, sorry, that's it. That is happening. So, yeah, I I don't think they will have as much influence as what they did have. Ineos are not stupid. So Jim Radcliffe isn't going to come in and bend over for the Glazers having handed over a small fortune to run the football part of the football club. Like, Ineos is gains from this. And they've said, look, they're not bothered about earning money from it. That's fine. They will want money out of it. Like, they're not going to invest that much money for nothing. Uh, there will be a return on it. And the return coming in is the success of the football club. The finances that do come in will then power the success on the pitch because they have promised to invest it back in to the football side of things. So, yeah. Adam, got any positive news slash vibes, mate? Uh, this team is depressing. Sorry, Cliff. Uh, the good news is that Wilcox is in. Uh, that is a promising sign uh, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, I'm just going to check, uh, see if there is anything else uh, quickly going on. Uh, United uh, have made a formal approach to Southampton for Jason Wilcox as per Matt Hughes uh, in the Daily Mail. Offered a year's salary as compensation. Southampton want more. Wilcox has 12-month notice period. Uh, so I don't know how that's going to escalate. He has now resigned. 
I don't know. I, there will probably end up being some compensation paid for Wilcox, uh, I'm guessing. I can't see it going without it. This is just the way things like this are run. And I think that Southampton will take advantage of of this of this situation with Wilcox not being in the door more than two minutes. Pretty much the same as Dan Ashworth. United are really going out there pissing plenty of clubs off at the moment. So uh, I've, they've just got to uh, hopefully be fully prepared for the aftershock. Like when it comes to doing business with other clubs again in the transfer market, say for instance, then we're probably going to end up getting burnt a little bit. Whether or not that sort of transfers to that side of things, I don't know. But you're still going to have Man United blacklisted, aren't you? If they've come and taken one of your major staff members away. Uh, something that Southampton were looking as a, a, as a new project with Wilcox. All of a sudden, the shiny lights of Old Trafford have come in and taken their new man away. Just like that. So, yeah, you are going to be a little bit miffed, aren't you? If you're a Southampton director or any part of the ownership of that club right now. Christopher Cooper, good evening, friends. Thank you for all your kind words and support. Very much appreciated by myself and my family yesterday. Bless you all. Uh, what a great friendship we got going here. Christopher, echo every single word that you just said there, mate. It is a great community and we are all right behind you, mate. Sending love to you and your family once again. Hope uh, everyone is okay and hope everyone is coping okay with that sad news that you received yesterday, Christopher. Uh, hats go out to you, mate, uh, and all your family. Hope you're well, my man. Uh, more comments coming in. Uh, out to Nag forever. He's the best, says MDR Samurai. I think he's had a drink. Uh, come on, United. Keep smashing them likes, guys. Almost at 200 likes, everybody. Just uh, creeping up to 600 people in the room. Please keep sharing the video and liking the video and make sure that you are subscribing if you are tuned in for the first time. Louise is in the chat and says, prefer other clubs to be pissed off uh, at us uh, than pity us and push us around like they've done recently. That's a good point. Moves like this and taking what we want gives big club vibes. Yes, it does, Louise. And it's a very good point that United need to stop thinking about other clubs and how things are run and playing the tune of what our opposition want, we need to just go out and do what we want to do. If you are the best, you go out and make it happen. And you go out and do whatever it takes to keep you the best. And I think that's Ineos' plan. Whether or not that transfers, like I said, into the transfer market for players, I do not know. But the signs that, if, if we were going off the signs of how they're building their structure and their team behind the scenes above the manager's head, then it bodes well. I'm not saying that necessarily automatically transfers over to what it's like in bringing players into the club. We will see, won't we, very, very soon. Only three months to wait until that actually happens and we see how Ineos' first transfer window actually plays out. So exciting times for that. Uh, Stefana, United, the board poachers. Yeah, we are. MDR says, I like uh, I like that Bella Kutcher lad uh, in defence at Southampton. Uh, currently on loan at PSV, so perfect for Eric Ten Hag. <laughs> He's Dutch. Oh, he has played in Holland, so that's good. Uh, which players would you build a team around in the summer, says Honest Tiger. Well, we talked about the three players that a lot of people have said are the bigger problem. Players to build around, uh, Martinez, Rasmus Hoyland, Kobe Mainu. There's your spine for me. That's what you build around. That's what you need to improve on. Obviously, you've got the likes of Garnacho there as well, another young player. But to build around the team, someone now say like Anana, trusting Anana, he's been doing well recently. He's finally finding his feet. He's been a lot more secure in goal. Uh, but yeah, the, the spine of Manchester United is positive, I feel. When you look at Martinez, Menu, and Rasmus Hoyland, you, that is the core. They're the foundations to the next five years at least at this football club and I think are the core to Ineos' new era at Manchester United they're the ones that we need to build around to answer that question on his tiger uh, behaving like Florentino Perez and not being him is fine with me Graham's going all in on the big front of Manchester United and being the bully boys get back to the top and do whatever you can to get there as quick as possible 
we have discussed Jason Wilcox. We have, we have, mate. It has happened. Uh, Sahil, I don't know if you've just joined us, but yeah, we have talked about the news that has broke. I'll just quickly flick into uh, any more. Uh, so just going off what Samuel Luckhurst has just reiterated now on Twitter, says United have offered Southampton the equivalent of a full year's salary for Jason Wilcox, who joined the club nine months ago. He's not been at the club a year. Southampton holding out for bigger fee, but United hopeful of an amicable outcome. So that is where we're at again. Uh, Jason Wilcox will serve a notice period of 12 months if he resigns before joining Manchester United. Simon Peach. Interesting. United are going to have to pay compensation. I don't think we can wait another year. A notice period of 12 months. Damn, man. He's... They have got these people tied into contracts, as they should. As they should. Like, you can't just come in and take them away. Like, that's the latest right now. And that's from Simon Peach, who is very well connected. So, you can take that as a definite. There is a 12-month notice period. I think United are going to have to pump up some money to cut this notice period short. Uh, they've offered a 12-month salary already. Southampton holding out for more. So, expect that to be... Uh, a little bit more of a bid. I don't know what his salary is at the moment, so that's going to be interested. I think that will be what people find out next. How much is Wilcox on a year at Southampton? You wouldn't have thought it would have been the highest paid wage in football. Uh, it, high for us uh, and us normal folk, but in terms of the footballing world, probably not the highest paid club, uh, highest paid job at any particular club in uh, English football. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what that amount is and how close Manchester United go to upping that first deal of a 12-month salary as an offer of compensation to Southampton. So, yeah, moving on from there, I would say it's down to Ineos again. I think this one, definitely easier than getting the Dan Ashworth deal over the line. I mean, Ashworth's salary is probably higher and it is a bigger, more important role at a rival as well. So that takes everything into... Uh, taking everything into consideration... I don't see Wilcox being a problem, not on the lines or anywhere near the sort of same as what Dan Ashworth is right now for the football club. So, yeah, I think we're in a comfortable enough position, uh, I think, with Wilcox, and I think they will end up paying a little bit more. Guardian lead for Wilcox, I bet, uh, so we contend to his roses. And we're going to have some great pitches next season, aren't we, by the time uh, everyone comes in from Guardian leave. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, maybe they're bringing him in to actually uh, be the new groundsman as well. They've had that much experience on gardening. Like, that's a poor joke, that I know, innit? I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. There was something there like that. It just didn't come out the right way. So, forgive me. Yeah, it's bank holiday. I've been eating chocolate. Uh, Peter Gratton. Uh, Kaz, just a thought as they play crap week after week and don't get dropped to give some of the youth players a chance. Uh, Kaz is on it with the chat tonight if you don't have uh, a garden do they provide you with one to take care of <laughs> I'm not even answering it MDR I'm not even answering it <laughs> United would probably give them an artificial pitch and not even realise <clears throat> Simon Peach would know too yes uh, Simon would no, trust me on that. That 12-month notice period will be a definite if Simon's tweeted it. So, yeah, uh, we know, I know Simon quite well from experience in press boxes and stuff. And, yeah, he is very, very well connected. So he will know that there is a 12-month period. United will have to up the bid. There will be money exchanged. Uh, whoever thinks uh, Rashi doesn't need to be sold really needs a mental checkup. I've not seen one person in the live chat today actually try and come and put up a fight for Marcus Rashford in staying at Manchester United. I've not seen one person. Uh, Adam, don't blame the chocolate. It can't help you. I know, but it was worth a try, wasn't it, Trev? <laughs> well, no, the Marcus Rashford situation. Just to go back before we finish up on what we started out at the top of the show, I brought up a load of comments regarding what people were saying the biggest problem is at Manchester United. Bringing up the video that we did earlier on today regarding Ten Hag's health and how the club looked like it's destroying him. Like, he, he physically looks worn out, like, physically looking like he's worn out. So, yeah, I reckon 
uh, like I said, like the comments all went on it. I didn't mention any particular player this morning, but the comments brought up Bruno Rashford and McTominay as the main protagonists and why we are suffering. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see. I Honestly, this summer I don't see any of them three leaving. I'm not saying that I don't want them to, or anyone in particular. You know my you know my thoughts on that situation. But if you ask me right now, if I had my famous reality cap on, I would say none of them players that everyone's got issues with will be out this summer. It will be a major, major breakthrough for Manchester United if one of them players left in the summer. In fact, any of them players left, then you would be talking Manchester United moving in a different direction straight away. And I, I don't want that to sound disrespective to any one of them players, but it would be. And you know what I mean by that. You do. You know what I mean. Since the Glazers are still in charge of financial, will they be signing off on any investments? I mean, uh, sure, Sir Jim gets the budget, but wouldn't it be the Glazers who decides that budget? Uh, in terms of what he spent, like Sir Jim Radcliffe is investing a certain amount of money, so I'm guessing he would have give certain, uh, there would have been certain uh, deals negotiated in with that money that he's invested into Manchester United and certain powers that he has. He knows what power he's got, and I think Manchester United and what money they generate uh, will be spent. The Glazers will be informed. They have to be informed, like you said, Peter. Uh, but we do have members of Ineos now on the other board as well. So it's not like it's just going to be one-way traffic. Ineos have put their people in place to make sure that they can do their jobs, which is the football side of things as well. Adam, what do you think Sesco, Neves, Lassen, Tadebo and Bramthwaite in the summer? Realistic, Claire, I would say Manchester United can get four of them players if we wanted them. You decide which four and come back to me before we finish up. That's your challenge, MDR. Uh, Jonathan, Adam, uh, was just proved this is live and unscripted. Has just proved. Have I? What did I say? I don't know. I forgot already. Like It's hard to keep up with a live chat because there's so many of you. I tried my best. Uh, tell Adam my cup is empty. See what I mean? Like, I'm getting abused from all sides here. I don't mind, honestly. I like the banter and I love the community and the chat that we have. Uh, we are not far away from 250 likes. Please, people, give the video a like. Download our Sofa Score app. Bottom right hand corner, guys. Scan the QR code or drop in the description below. Click on the top link, Sofa Score. It's completely free. I don't want anything from you, but just use our link there. Help support the channel and help yourselves in getting the best stats and up-to-date football news that there is out there with SofaScore, the best football app on the market. Proven by being in the top 20 on the App Store. I didn't put it there. Everyone else did. They're doing the reviews, not me. They just give good stats. That's all. Uh, get Jao Neves, uh, Gonzalo Inacio, uh, Hakimi and Antonio Silva here. Hopefully. rajat has gone in full-on FIFA mode right there. Michael Bethwaite says, is Marcus Rashford one of the players is called out by the fans? Yes, uh, you might not have been on earlier on, Michael. I'll just join us late, but I did bring up some comments that were on the previous video this morning. If you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. It's a short video just talking about how Manchester United is literally destroying Eric Ten Hag and another manager that has that the football club has had this effect on. So that's what we're talking about. And then the comments from that came up with the main player issues in the club being Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes and Scott McTominay. There's only one of them players that I feel the real need to sell. And you all know that that's Marcus Rashford. I just don't want Scott in the first team. It doesn't work. I want him on the bench as an impact player. Bruno, I've not got a problem in dropping him and making him come back stronger, resting him. Letting Mason Mount have a go. It's all part of what can be done right now. Like, problems we're talking about can be resolved. You need a manager to do it. And I just think the pressure of it is just telling. And it's taking its toll on Eric Ten Hag now. And I think that's clear. That's what we talked about this morning. And that's what we've sort of carried on this evening in the live show as well. So, yeah, uh, that's where I'm at with that. But in terms of everything... 
That is us all covered for the weekend, guys. Uh, top news, just to go over everything again, Manchester United have approached Southampton with an offer of compensation for their director of football, Jason Wilcox, to come in as head uh, of... Uh, oh, God, I can't remember what head it was now. Uh, another director. Uh, <clears throat> I can't remember which one, but yeah... <laughs> It's left me. Uh, but yeah, it, United have offered uh, a year's salary to Southampton as compensation for Jason Wilcox. That has been rejected. Wilcox has resigned. He will, if United don't figure out a compensation package, will have to serve a 12-month notice period before he takes any other role at any other club. So Ineos will have to spend money on Wilcox in making this happen. Uh, we talked about the players, the issues, and that pretty much is it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us yet again on another fantastic stream. We've smashed the 250 like mark, guys. We have new subs. We have new members. We have smashed it. All the Super Chats as well, guys. All of your comments. Get commenting on the video. If I've missed anything out on the live show, comment once this video finishes on the live and get it up on YouTube comment section. Uh, and I will come back to as many of them by the end of the night as well. So, yeah, guys, that is it. Thank you again. Have a great rest of your bank holiday weekend. I've watched there is only a few hours left. Don't forget, if you need to put your bins out, get them out. It is a Monday. It's not a Sunday. We kind of get mixed up with that sort of thing, don't we? Uh, but I will see you all back to the normal schedule live tomorrow at 12 o'clock.